It is quickly becoming one of the biggest news stories of the year. The end of November, 196 nations will gather in Paris to discuss a new global agreement on climate change. The current commitments on greenhouse gas emissions are not only not good enough, but they also run out in 2020. This new agreement is about what happens for the next decade and beyond. So what exactly do we need to accomplish? Well, it's all based on the scientific predictions that if greenhouse gas emissions continue to rise, we will pass the threshold beyond which global warming becomes catastrophic and irreversible. That threshold is estimated as a temperature rise of two degrees above pre-industrial levels. On trajectories, we are headed for a rise of about five degrees Celsius. That may not sound like much, but the temperature difference between today's world and the last ice age was about five degrees. So where does the science come from? The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC for short, is a scientific body of the UN. Taking the latest work from scientists all over the world, the IPCC is the internationally accepted authority on climate change that governments use to make decisions about global warming. But agreeing on how to reduce emissions has not been easy. Global negotiations on climate change have been carrying on for more than 20 years. In 1992, governments first met in Rio de Janeiro and forged the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. But it took until 1997 to agree on what action should be taken, the Kyoto Protocol. That pact required worldwide cuts in emissions for developed countries, but gave no targets or limits to developing countries like China. And the protocol was never ratified by the US, one of the key emissions producers that would make this official. The US, along with European leaders, took steps in Copenhagen in 2009, but ultimately, a treaty did not happen. That takes us to Paris 2015. We already know what the biggest emitters have committed to. And although agreement is not a done deal, countries responsible for 75% of the world's carbon emissions have now set targets for cuts, including big commitments from the EU, US, China, and India. Where does Canada stand? Well, the new Liberal government has said that the national target set by the Conservatives for cutting greenhouse gas emissions should be considered a floor for future action. But we have yet to set a target in advance of the conference. If the targets put forward by all the major polluters are honoured, these levels of emissions would hold global warming at 2.7 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial era. Still too far above the 2 degrees threshold, but lower than feared. Perhaps the final push will come from outside the UN process, from cities, local governments, businesses, individuals. But the battle is far from over, so stay tuned.